Hey Pete, can you explain with the bags how they have two different measurements? They've got a 500 and an 812. What, what am I looking at there? Yeah, okay, good question. Uh, it's quite a common thing that we get asked. It's a little bit confusing how plastic bags are defined. Mm. So let me go through that. So the most common bag that we have is what we call the 500 bag. It's actually in flat form. So the measurement across here is the 812 mil. Right. And that'll be 812, then the length is 1346 or something in that nature. And that is a 500 bag, so how does that work? So it's basically the width of the bag times by two. Okay, so that gives you 600 and 1624 mm -hmm. and then divided that by pi which is uh, okay a standard figure which is 3.3.142 mm -hmm. and that gives you your 500 diameter so we've got a, a mock-up spigot here so this is a 500 spigot okay wow. um, and then if you were to times 500 by 3.142 which is the calculation for the circumference of a circle yeah that gives you your 1600 millimeters divided by two, half <clears throat> is your 812. So that, that's how they worked out. Uh, just a few other bits while we've got them here. So you'll see, hopefully you can just see on the bottom there, we've got a, a double seal on the bottom for added confidence protection. So if one seal was to go, you still have a backup seal on there as well. The 500 gauge equivalent, so they're pretty strong. Yeah. The, you do well to push your thumb through it. So they're suitable for rubble, wood waste. You know, they're predominantly used in the, in the wood waste industry for collecting from bagging units, which is what this is sort of a mock-up of, a, a bag spigot. So a 500 bag spigot. You'll see that there's a, um, yeah, a little bit of tolerance. There's about 3% tolerance in plastic bags, just purely because how they're made. Um, so you could either fold it over, we have these uh, bagging straps which hold them nicely in place. You can ratchet that as tight as you like. Or we've got some self-adhesive seal you could put onto the uh, spigots to get a really good seal to yeah. compress against the neoprene rubber. Um, and then we do various sizes, a 400, a 500 and a 600 diameter and they're calculated the same way. So if you want to find out what bag is the right bag for you, on your bagging unit, if you measure across the spigot, so the diameter wise, take the generator around, so you see this spigot is 500 diameter, and then you choose the next size up, so it's 480, you want to go with a 500, if it's 550, you want to go with a 600, and as I said, you can always just, as we've done here, just turn over, a, turn over an edge just to seal it up, ratchet it up, get it nice and tight. Mm. I mean, that can be done with anything. Uh, so we've got the 400, the 500, the 600. So if you measure across your spigot and then go to the next biggest size up for bag. So this one is 500. So it actually works out at 515. It'll go up to, but bear in mind there is tolerance. So we would always say go with the closest one that's just a bit bigger. We also do some which are designed to go into a square bin. Right. So where these are designed to be under pressure, so we pressure test these because uh, when they're in use they're under constant pressure from air okay. and particles in there. The other ones that we call the square bags are designed to go in a bin and now they've got three measurements which is a little bit more complicated because they're gusty but we'll cover that in a different video. Sure. Um, so yeah that's the, the 500 bag, uh, 500 gauge equivalent. Uh, they're the flat sizes and that's how we work out the um, diameter of them. Nice and easy. Okay, perfect. All right. Yeah, thank you.